All right, guys, we feel very fortunate, uh, needless to say, Wake in the league is 0-6 now, and they've been there, right there, every game they played in the second half. And uh, tonight was what has been happening to them all year. I told Steve I liked what he's doing. It doesn't get him erased by me saying that. But uh, it was difficult for us tonight. Uh, Isaiah is 4 for 24 for the year from three-point line. He sees us coming. He's seven for 12. And uh, three times in a row in the second half, we gave him a second shot opportunity, and they made two threes and one field, uh, two-point field goal. But I liked a couple of things in the second half. We had 12 assists, three turnovers. Uh, I like the fact that I look at Leaky Black, and it's uh, eight assists, one turnover. Uh, Caleb had two turnovers in the first four minutes and then didn't have another one until the next last player, last minute anyway, when he didn't understand the rule. I told him I couldn't imagine how much money everybody's family spends sending them around the world in the summer and uh, you don't realize that rule but I tell you what Caleb was stepped up uh, four of seven from free throw line which is not good for him he made two big threes for us and again think in terms of two turnovers in the first four minutes and didn't have another turnover for basically 35 minutes uh, uh, second chance points I hate it when the other team is 18-9 but I do like the fact that we had 12 turnovers and they had 20 so uh, we had more points at the end, and that's the biggest difference. C.L. Brown. Roy, do you feel like you can see Caleb kind of the light switch going on for him um, in terms of offensively how he's performing? And has that carried over in turn to defense? He had a couple of, of blocks and a steal uh, in that first half. Yeah, defensively, I think he could be one of the best defensive guards I've ever coached. Play in his position. He has strength. He has speed. He has jumping ability. He has great feet. Uh, most of the time, when you get a freshman, it doesn't mean that much to him, but it's meaning more and more to Caleb all the time. I do. You know, you look and you say three assists, three turnovers. You want it to be better than that, but two of those, as I said, came really early. And uh, uh, but I like the fact that uh, uh, he took some jump shots with confidence. Uh, seven for 12 tonight is by far, I think, the best game he's had from the floor. Uh, I do think he's getting better. I told him yesterday or the day before uh, we had a little meeting, and I told him that uh, I think he's getting better a little bit each and every day, and we just got to keep getting him some opportunities. Uh, RJ struggled for a while, but RJ came in and uh, uh, did some good things. So he had both freshman guards doing some. Kerwin missed more shots to, today than he's missed all preseason. And I thought we would have a advantage inside, but uh, our guys struggled inside except for Armando. And Armando early in the second half was most of our offense at that time. Josh Graham. Coach, usually we see in the COVID protocol, coaches just wave at each other when it's all said and done. You mentioned you went to Coach Forbes and, and uh, applauded the way that his team fought. Why was it so important I didn't hug to him. communicate that to him? We still have both of us had our mask on, and I didn't hug him, so we're all right. What? Yeah, I mean, think about it, guys. He's in six straight games in the league in the second half, and a lot of those games he had a lead. And I don't know what uh, – you know, they had to lead on us starting the second half and still had it a couple minutes in. But uh, I just think he's doing a really good job in a very difficult situation. Brendan. Okay, thank you. That's better. Hey, Roy, uh, just to go back to Caleb, you've mentioned how at points in this season, he, he's been so concerned with his shot going in that some of the other parts of his game suffer or struggle. H have you noticed that he's getting away from that mindset a little bit as he does pick up on some of these defensive teachings and improves on that end of the floor? You know, guys, he's a, a freshman. Who knows what freshmen are thinking all the time, but I know that he's coming to practice every day and he's trying hard. Uh, he's getting a lot of shots up and in the shots, uh, when we do the uh, uh, shooting drills, uh, Kerwin usually beats him in the second guy on our teams, either Andrew or uh, Caleb. And so he's been shooting it well in practice and he's been really working at it. I mean, you saw after one of our games, he was still here at midnight working on his shot. So he's working at it and just a tremendous young man. And, but I'll give you guys a lesson. You can dribble the ball. If you fumble it, you can pick it up. You don't have to get down a stance and try to shield somebody coming in there. You can pick it up, but you can't dribble it again. And uh, so that's something that uh, uh, that hurt his feelings there at the end. But still, you look at that line, seven for 12, two for three. He's usually one of our best free throw shooters also by far. 
and he just missed some of tonight. But uh, I hope he feels good about the way he played. Ross Martin. Hey, Roy, uh, you mentioned Baycott, you know, uh, 18 points, 14 in the second half. What would you like from what he did? And, and do you think you're getting your post guys enough touches or, or are y'all getting enough touches you would like down low? No, I'd like them to get the ball every single time because then they're going to get fouls. And at the end of the game, I mean, guys, think about this. Uh, this is not to ha at half. Um, Wake Forest post players had zero fouls. That's not good for us. Us at the end of the game, uh, 33 got his fourth foul, and we've won a lot of big games, national championship type games, with the other team's guys, uh, players in foul trouble. So if you throw it into the post guy every time, they throw it back out. Those shots are usually more open, but you got a better chance to get fouled. And uh, if you can play at the end of the game with the other team's best players, you go back to even Stanford, their leading score stayed on the bench most of the game. And so that's a part of our philosophy. And I don't think that uh, our post guys posted up strong enough or low enough. we got to get Armando to quit grabbing and pushing because he had two turnovers just pushing somebody. And uh, you can't do those kind of things, just play basketball. Okay, we got time for a couple of more here. Andrew and then Adam. Andrew Jones. Yeah. Coach, the team didn't come out of the tunnel until about 50 seconds or so. We're left on the clock at halftime. Um, what did you did you like the energy early in the second half? Was it a, a, a stark difference from the first half? And what part of their game was a lot better as a result of whatever it was you told them at halftime? Well, what we did is we got together in a circle and held hands and sang kumbaya. That's what we did at halftime. But, you know, Andrew, it's the biggest thing is you shoot 55% in the second half because you get better shots. Uh, you know, Caleb took one run in one hander, leg up, looked like an old man shooting the ball on the left side and one other bad one. But other than that, most of our shots were very good shots in the second half. Uh, we had a lot of things to talk about at halftime. Uh, I think the second half warm up is the most overrated thing in, in college basketball, except for timeouts, of course. But uh, uh, we talked about the mistakes that we'd made, talked about challenging our big guys to get posted up lower to be more effective, be stronger. I think I'm looking at Armando was eight for 10. Did he miss two shots in the first half? And, well, he missed one shot both halves. So in the second half, he was six for seven. That is one of the things we talked about, our big guys being stronger, going to the basket with the ball because they had zero fouls. And we talked about the turnovers. So I think the biggest thing in the second half was our lack of turnovers. Adam Smith. Roy, I know Mucius and Williamson had huge nights offensively for them, but did you did you like your defensive energy in the second half? It seemed like it was kind of picked up a little bit with, with your trapping and some of your pressing and you're creating steals and things like that. It seemed like that was maybe a, 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 one of the keys to the second half, the defense. Yeah, I think so. You know, you look down in points off turnovers, we had 24 and they had 15. Uh, so that, that was beneficial for us. You know, it's uh, Williamson is hard to handle and uh, – so in the second half, we tried to double him a couple of possessions early. Then we tried to switch. And, uh, you know, we have some guys that can get down and slide their feet, even our big guys. And uh, I felt like that he was really, really good. Again, the guy that really killed us was Isaiah. And uh, during warm-ups, the ball bounced over to me, and I got it and give it, I gave it to him. And that was the first assist of the night because he made the shot after I gave it to him as well. But uh, he just – killed us I mean seven for 12 after going four for 24 but my thing is if a guy makes one you say okay but if he makes a second one you got to get way out there and guard him and other than uh, their second chance points I thought our defense was better by far in the second half other than their second chance points thanks we'll get to Armando will be in next all right 